medicinal solutions. And he's going to be calling in to talk about the benefits of CBD, and that's coming up a little bit later on, right before the 420 break. One more chance. Michael? He's gone. He's out of here. He's gone. All right. So oh, we're going to talk to another Michael. Michael <laughs> Tolbert. Hello, Much everyone. more interesting. How are you? I'm well, my friend. How about you? I am great. Thank you, Mike Tolbert. So to let our listeners know a little bit about Mike Tolbert, he has been a photographer for a long time. And the way we got to know each other is that Mike would show up at some of the gigs that I was doing. I rem remember many a times on Santa Monica Boulevard at the uh, Circus Disco mm -hmm. where there were like trance nights and you would be there with your camera taking pictures mm -hmm. and uh, you've done and you've gone to the raves you've gone to all the big events in the past and uh, yeah pretty much everything under the sun in those days we're talking about you know the uh the uh, mid to late 90s, early 2000s here. That's the time period that uh, Eagle is describing. And uh, this is, yeah, it was an incredible era, you know, and I was all too enthusiastic to uh, document it. It was uh, just a, an incredible explosion of music and talent and uh, entrepreneurialism on the uh, people's uh, promoter's part and all that. I mean, it was just like a perfect storm of everything coming together. Yeah. And we were at the center of all of it. Yeah, it was very exciting. And we got another mutual friend, Christopher Lawrence, is yes. coming in here a little bit later on. You're going to be gone by then, but oh. Christopher was definitely around at the time. was one of the DJs mm -hmm. that's in your book. Yes, he is. He provided a great interview uh, for my book, D uh, Dance Floor Thunderstorm, Land of the Free, Home of the Rave. That's what Eagles just uh, was waving in front of that camera there yeah. a minute ago. Uh, yeah, that was a book that I put out a couple of years ago uh, about the glory days of the rave scene. Uh, it's uh, written and uh, photographed by myself, uh, edited by my uh, old friend and uh, herb colleague Josh Glazer, and uh, it, was a, uh, it was a labor of love and a bit of a labor of sadomasochism as well. It took more than four years to get the thing done. <laughs> and Josh was in Berlin at the time. And thank God for Skype and Dropbox, otherwise right, we exactly. never would have been able to finish it. Right. And uh, well, you mentioned Herb for a minute, and that's Herb Magazine yes. that you used to shoot pictures for. Mm -hmm. And is Herb Magazine online? Uh, not as such, no. I mean, there is a pre Herb presence, but it's not the same thing as it was. It, uh, Raymond Roker, to my knowledge, has nothing to do with uh, the current stuff oh, okay. of, uh, of Herb. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Raymond, Work, Ra Raymond Roker was the entrepreneur behind the original Herb magazine that came out in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, uh, which originally was a street zine practically in the very early years on newsprint, and uh, he built that into uh, his own uh, global mini empire. And, yeah, uh, he did a great job. He, he loved Herb magazine. Yeah, that was a fantastic one, and that was just one of the ones that I was shooting for uh, back then. There were many Many others like uh, you know BPM Culture and Mixer, which used to be Mix Mag US. Uh, there was also Lotus and, uh, you know, a bunch of other smaller Man, ones. the memories keep flooding back. So <laughs> if, if, if you go to our YouTube right now, so where do you go again, Angela, if you're just listening and you're not watching, what should you do? You should go to YouTube.com and our channel is Groove Radio Network. And you can see the uh, incredible pictures that we're displaying that Michael have taken over mm -hmm. the years. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. L like, look at that. Okay, so can you see that, the, this Mike? One, you see yes, that I picture? can see it. Yes, that picture is from the uh, party called Dune 4. It was a massive desert rave. Uh, that's not even the full crowd there, if you can believe that. Uh, wow. that, that picture is, that was taken about 7 in the morning. And uh, what that picture doesn't show is that about midnight uh, during this party, a huge sandstorm came and blasted through that whole you know area. And there were about f I think about five thousand kids you know there at that point, and all of us went scurrying for our tents you know be uh, because you know the sand was being blown sideways you know it was upwards of 40 miles an hour i mean it was not pleasant I bet they had, they would have to stop the music no no in fact christopher you can ask christopher about this because he was playing at the time and the poor guy i mean his the the wind was so intense that his toner arms were being blown all over the place and so they, they were trying to shield the decks and it was completely unsuccessful so what they ended up doing was and christopher confirms this in the book by the way um 
what they did is they took stacks of quarters and taped them to the ends of the tone arms to weigh the needles down to so keep them on hard. the hard. Oh right. my God! Now, now here, here's the problem. It seemed to work, so they kept going. Here was the problem. Christopher, unknown to them, Christopher was spending mostly with acetates. Ah. Right? And the weight of all that quarters was grooved the sand into the oh, records God. and destroyed yeah. a good amount of his inventory that he brought with him that night. He took a huge hit for the team. Uh, I mean, he tried to get the sand out later. And, uh, you know, in this Probably scene. impossible. It was. It was. So, so we're flinging around words that you may or may not know. Like acetates. So <laughs> DJs used to like back in the day, mm -hmm. you would you know you would have to make a record in order to play it. And right. to make a record, you made an acetate so that you could have it and test it and see at home mm -hmm. if this is actually what you wanted. Right. And then you would go back to the record company and say, yes, I'm happy with it. And then they would press the records. Right. And most of the time, acetates are just used for demo purposes, like you're describing. Right. But DJs very often use acetates as excuses to be able to get brand new material out there to the public. To exactly. Like no. Nobody else had. Ex right. I mean, this is the same thing that you know um, they used to do in Jamaica. You know, back in the seventies, you know, um, they would have. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, what the, who who was the upsetter? Um, oh, uh, uh, I can't remember then. Oh, that's very early ska music yeah, very, in Jamaica. Well, yeah, the, but the bottom line is that they, uh, you know, they would produce you know stuff in the studio and they would tested on audiences that very night, you know, right. in the clubs in Kingston. In a sound clash or something, yeah. Yeah, some, yeah. And these acetates were expensive, like 40, 50, 60 bucks. I know Paul Oakenfold used to press them up all the time, mm -hmm. Christopher Lawrence, so I can just imagine that, you know, you can get a bunch of plays out of an acetate if you were careful with them. Right. But to play them in a sandstorm in a desert, that, maybe not the best idea. It, it probably wasn't, no. Okay, so we're looking at some other pictures right now. Okay. Can you see what they yes, are? Yes, you got a couple there. The one on the left, that was shot at a mountain rave uh, at the uh, Snow Valley Ski Resort at about, that's also about 7 o'clock in the morning. The sun is coming right up. And... Um, that I'm using a very special film called Color Infrared Film, which takes the, if you'll notice, the trees are all scarlet and not green. Uh, the trees were definitely not that color in real life. <laughs> and uh, we, we were not raving on Mars, though I'm sure it felt that way to more than a few. Right. <laughs> um, no, it was, uh, yeah, she was just uh, dancing there, and she, I had her there for about 15 seconds, and uh, I managed to get the one. The one on the right, that's uh, Sandra Collins and superstar DJ Kiyoki, and that was at a very funny party at Kiyoki's old lair in downtown L.A. He used to have this artist complex down there, which was this like, rabbit warren of rooms where he would have musical instruments and he would have his various artwork and stuff. And one of the walls, you can't see that in this picture, but one of the walls was completely covered f like about 10 by 20 feet with Kiyoki's stream of consciousness poetry that he had been wow. written up on. Yeah. Uh, that's in the book. You can see that. And uh, anyway, it was, it was funny because uh, we weren't originally supposed to be there. I, what happened was this was in 1999, and Sandra called me up and said, one night and said, I'm playing in Reseda in a couple of days. That's in the San Fernando Valley for you guys not uh, in the L.A. area. Can I come up there and shoot and you know hang out? I said absolutely. Everything to support a friend. So uh, fast forward to the gig. I go there. Sandra shows up at midnight. Uh, plays a great two-hour set. Everything wraps up, and we're standing out in their park, in, out there in the parking lot. And then this limo shows up, and Kiyoki comes out of the limo. He wasn't due to spin. Oh, okay. No, so basically, what he did is he sort of kidnapped us and brought us, spirited us away back to his artist complex in downtown LA. Well, not quite kidnapped. Right, I mean, right. We didn't take much convincing. <laughs> I mean, he he, he lured us. Yes. But he lured us with whiskey and promises of a good time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, so we go went over there and uh, we got there somewhere about between three and four in the in the morning. And I got out of there about between 1 and 2 the following afternoon. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you guys had a long night. Oh, yes. It, w it was, uh, let's say, uh, much fun and much debauchery was had. <laughs> Dan's Floor Thunderstorm, Land of the Free, Home of the Raid. Yes. It's available on Amazon right now if you'd like to buy the book. Mm -hmm. You can also win it. We have a couple of Michael Tolberg autographed copies. I that's think right. that's what you're looking at right here. If you'd like to win this book, just head to the, uh, the contest section at GrooveRadio.com for a chance to win this book. And if you can't win it, you can uh, 
enter into place there to buy it, or you can go directly to Amazon to buy the book. You can also go to dancefloorthunderstorm.com. You can order it there, too. And then there is like a second version of the book that's available. I'll give that a quick mention. There is. There's an e-book, um, or rather an iBook, an Apple Interactive iBook sequel called Dance Floor Thunderstorm, The Outtakes. And that's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Uh, because of the, we went through, when we put Dance Floor Thunderstorm together, there were thousands of images we went through. And when we got down to the nitty gritty of putting down the final images in that book, that's when the editing was turning painful. Because right. we were turning away so many high quality pictures and we were scratching our heads going, why are we doing this? You know, uh, But it had to be done. And so uh, for the outtakes, I mean, I just took the best of uh, most of those outtakes and when completely interactive on it, since it's an iBook, you know, you can, uh, it's, uh, especially if you put it on your iPad, I mean, you can uh, pinch and uh, zoom and uh, scroll through galleries and stuff. There's uh, online links uh, to some great online stuff, um, uh, including uh, links to some great music, uh, like uh, there's a picture in there of uh, John Digweed playing at Winter Music Conference, and I think it was 2001, and I found someone who posted the, that set online so I linked to that oh, okay. hopefully that's still up there yeah very um, cool and there's a long lost interview uh, I did with BT when I first met him uh, back in 1998 oh okay so that, you know that, that's a cool one yeah, a good very, little step back in time very cool and again go to uh, that's Amazon it. to buy Dance Floor Thunderstorm or go to, to the contest section at GrooveRadio.com for a chance to win that's right thank you so much for coming by Michael you're awesome keep up the good work my pleasure Eagle keep up the good fight Cool. Amazing. Thank you so much, Michael. Oh, my pleasure. Wow. <laughs> you go, uh, where Anna? The phone, the phone thingy. Where is it?